So if you saw the last video, you saw that we got the Sea King started. It appeared to be overheating. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and drop the lower unit and see what there is for an impeller and how the coolant system uh, looks uh, from the lower unit on up. So let's get to it. All right, so we think we figured out where to disconnect the shift connector. It is buried in here, and I'm going to try to give you guys a close-up of this. There's an Allen key right here, and it's connected to the shift rod. So we think that loosening up that Allen key is going to let us pull this lower unit off. And we're going to find that out in a second. So we got lucky, uh, we got the lower unit off, we figured out where the shift uh, connecting rod went through it. Actually, it's pretty easy, it's a hex head uh, Allen bolt. Getting it in there might be a little bit of fun. Um, before I do anything with this though, I'm going to check out the uh, pickup tube and make sure that there's no bugs or anything up in there that are, uh, that are causing the problem. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. So we got this old coat hanger. And we're going to stick it right up there. We're going to see if I get any resistance. No, it goes right up to the engine block. No resistance. All right, so as far as we can tell, the pickup tube is clean. So the next thing we're going to do is check the impeller on this little beast and uh, see what it looks like. And if it's bad, hopefully we can get a new one. If it's not, then, then we got something else going on inside the engine uh, that's not letting water flow. So I'm going to... Get a bigger screwdriver. Actually, we have a good impeller. Should be a key. Okay, there's a little. That little notch is uh, where the impeller hooks up to. Thank God it didn't have one of those keys. So now this impeller is pretty decent condition. So I've been working away on this housing. Um, I've got cutting fluid on this 3M220 uh, sandpaper, and it's not wet or dry, but it's uh, pretty much could be because of the plastic backing on it. I'm trying to smooth this thing out, I'll do the same thing to the base. It's already been worked some, as you can see, it's got a pretty decent uh, surface on it. All right, so next I'm going to take a piece of wood, same piece of sandpaper, and I'm going to go around the base, basically do the same thing, get it cleaned up, and as flat as possible. And that's the whole purpose of this, is to get it as flat as possible. We've got the base and the pump housing cleaned up. I'm going to do one thing before I start reassembling this. I'm going to put a very light coat of Triple Guard Grease, the BRP stuff for Evan Roods and Johnson's, on the inside, just the inside around here. Now, there's a little hole in there, and it was clogged. That might have contributed to the problem. It's kind of hard to see. It's right on this side here. And I think that's to expel any air when the pump starts, but I'm not sure. But I don't want to clog that hole, so just a very light coat of this BRP Grease on the inside and we're going to take the water pump now the impeller is going to spin clockwise so I want to put that in there in that direction like so 
I'm going to make a note of where the indentation, the notch is. Then I'm going to take some acetone and I'm going to clean all the mating surfaces. Make sure they're pretty much spotless and grease free. I'm going to use the Permatex water pump sealant. It's not really marine, but it doesn't matter really. It's intended for water pumps and it's a uh, silicone based. It should hold up well. It's good practice for the housing because we want to minimize the amount that we get inside the housing, obviously. Outside the boat holes, best practice. Put the plate on it and rest it gently. Now we're going to get the impeller housing. Obviously you don't want to get this stuff on the impeller, but I think it's inevitable that some is going to get on there. Now I've got the notch. Now, according to the Permatex instructions, what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten these up loosely and um, just enough to start putting some pressure down on the Permatex and spread it out a little bit. We're going to let that cure for an hour and then we're going to come back and tighten it down to its final pressure. Now, if you're wondering if some got an impeller, probably did, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it in the direction it normally would just to keep that thing fluid, keep it from gluing itself. I don't think it would, but it's not gonna hurt. All right, so we'll come back in an hour and um, tighten it up. Then we'll let it dry for 24 hours before we put it on the boat. All right, it's been an hour and I'm gonna go ahead and buck these down. And uh, that should have given it enough time So I've got the uh, water pump and impeller back in here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spin test it in this little tank before I mount it. Make sure that it works. And I'm going to do that with a drill. Stuart Danger Marine uh, did one of these in uh, really explains why these pumps are not self-priming and that would um, almost have to be immersed so let's see what we got here and it's pumping water it is definitely pumping water so I'm going to go ahead and mount it on the outboard and then we'll uh, test it with the motor running alright so I've actually got a little jar of um, silicone grease and I'm going to put some on the pickup tube which should make it easier to uh, slide the uh, this boot over it. Maybe put a little bit in the boot. It's not going to hurt anything, but it will make it easier. And I'm going to place this in there. The uh, shift shifter's in the uh, forward position because that's where we had to put it to get it to, uh, to where it was accessible. Now, if we could find the hole.
the lower unit is on this guy so we're going to go ahead and test it um, I've actually got a little temperature sensor just to double check to make sure it's not overheating one of the things we'll be looking for is for water to be coming out of this port here if the water pumps working correctly it should splash out of there um, I'm going to go ahead and fill it up as high as I can uh, with the container and go ahead and give it a start and we'll check the temperature water coming out of it there so the water pump and impeller are working fine now temperatures hovering about 140 let it run another minute or two and uh see where it's at All right, so we're going to call this a success. The uh, cleaning up the impeller housing and the uh, plate, sealing it up, getting the impeller in there in the correct uh, position, apparently works. This engine does have to be immersed a little more than I expected, but that's okay. The temperature never went up over 140 degrees, so it's cool. You can actually touch the block and it works fine. If you've enjoyed this video, hit share, like, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.